Is it on? It's on. There's a red red light. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> Page 36, section 3.1, organic molecules. Uh oh. Whoa. <laughs> Coach, did you realize we have you the exact same day every day? Time. Time. Same time. Day. Really? Yeah, exactly. Same time of day. day. Same time of day? Yeah, same period, yeah. same times. Same heavy. Are you serious? That always sounds weird. There's always one class. Yeah, yeah. you're right. This is the same period. I don't know why they can't just go in these classes and just like shuffle. Like the first class. It's always got to have some like. Okay. Right. They, they do that because the, there are some middle school teachers that also teach high school. Yeah. And they have to be the same place in D period in middle school. And so they had to make D period the same each day. It's, there, it's, a, it's a quagmire. What is a oh, quagmire? Okay. Hello. Computers can do that? Hey, baby. What movie? Awesome, awesome. Power. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, That's uh, that's one of my favorite movies. So very, very good A lot of awesome good films. Okay, we're talking about organic molecules. What is an organic molecule? Natural. Organic molecules, basically, the easiest way to put it is they contain carbon and hydrogen. If you see a molecule that has both carbon and hydrogen, it's an organic molecule. And what we mean when we say it's an organic molecule is it's made by living things. Organic means living. And so if a molecule is made by living things, it's an organic molecule. They usually have, or they always have, covalent bonds in them, whereas inorganic molecules sometimes, or usually have ionic bonds, which we also study. And organic molecules are often very large. Some organic molecules have billions of atoms in them, whereas most inorganic molecules are real small, like H2O, that's inorganic. It's small. CO2, inorganic. But the, you can often run into very large atoms. And here's an example of an organic molecule, octane. You ever heard of octane before? Yes. Where have you heard of octane? Octane fuel. Or... Octane fuel, that's right. At the gas pump, you go and you get a certain level of octane gas. You can get 87 octane, that's regular. 92 mm -hmm. octane is, is like next best. And then premium is like 95 octane or something like that. And that's telling you basically the percentage of this stuff, or not the percentage, but the amount of octane it has in the fuel. And the more octane it has, the more pure the fuel is, I guess. And hot, if you have a high performance engine, you have to have mostly this. But the regular engines that most of us have, you don't have to have as much of this. Now, this was, octane is a, is a molecule that was actually created hundreds of millions of years ago when a bunch of algae and plant material was covered up by movements of the earth and buried and compressed into oil and natural gas. And then we dig it out of the ground and put it in our cars and burn it. And so that's where this came from. That's why it's an organic molecule. You're burning old plants. Indeed. Now, here's a molecule called cyclohe... Oh, and by the way, one other thing. The reason why it's called octane is because it has eight carbons. Did anyone catch that? Whoa, like octopus has eight arms, octane has eight carbons. And, and there's a way... Eight sides. There you go. There's a, there's a, there's a nomenclature if you, when you take organic chemistry in college, if you take it. They teach you how to name these things. Like if it had seven carbons, it would be called heptane. Six carbons is hexane. Why ain't? Five carbons is pentane. Ane means it's all single bonds. Between well, all the carbons. What if they're all single bonded of another element? But there were eight of them. Between carbons? 
not not carbon, but like like sulfur, like sulfur is like one. Sulfur if they were sulfur. if they were all sulfurs bonded together, oh, yeah. wouldn't be an organic molecule. Oh, out. <laughs> now here's cyclohexane. Hexane because it has six carbons. Cyclo because they go around in a circle and bond with one another. Now remember, each line you see between atoms is a, is a covalent bond. That means they're sharing electrons with one another because they love each other. <laughs> they want to be close to them to satisfy the octet rule. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Now here are some functional groups that often stick off the sides of organic molecules. Organic oh. molecules are usually chains of carbon and hydrogen with stuff sticking out the sides. And these are some of the stuff that sticks out the sides. You may have heard of an alcohol before. You probably drink alcohol every day <laughs> before, after, and during school. <laughs> Definitely before <laughs> breakfast is my main alcohol intake. Well, an alcohol <laughs> is actually just an organic molecule with OH sticking off the end. And so the, the OH group is called a hydroxyl group. Did you learn that in chemistry, a hydroxyl group? That's how alcohols are formed. For instance, ethanol is two carbons with an OH group sticking off the end. Ethane means two. Methane means one. Have you ever heard of ethanol or methanol? Ethanol is what's in alcoholic beverages. Ethanol. It can also be burned in, a, in car fuel. They use ethanol, the same thing that they put in alcoholic beverages, as fuel. So could you drink fuel? Uh, no, because fuel has other stuff in it that's not uh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like millions of years of dead old plants. But, I mean, you've heard of like, like the old stills and they make the moonshine and the guy takes a swig of it and then pours the rest in his gas tank. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it like is, the in little amounts you might be able to handle it, but if you drank a lot of it, it'd kill you. All right. Um, but the gasoline, the gasoline that you put into your gas tank, no, you can't drink that. It's got other stuff in it. But you could use that alcohol in a still to fuel your car? Yes. Sweet. Mm -hmm. for, for a little bit. It uh, burns at a different rate than gasoline. Your car wasn't made look, to burn it. It'd it blow burns your fast. engine up. Oh, yeah. So you'd have, to, you'd have to have like a moonshine engine. You'd, yeah, you'd have to have an engine made for that stuff. So they, they did use start making those in engines like moonshine. They do. I mean, have you ever seen the the corn, the ethanol grown from corn, and they sell it in gas? They, I mean, that's that's that. So that's moonshine, just yeah, basically. Some drag cars are all pure alcohol too. Yeah, that's right. Alcohol drag racers. Yeah. Here's some other things. Uh, uh, you may have heard of a, a carboxyl group, a C double bond O, OH. Did you learn that in chemistry? Carboxyl group? Yeah. An amino group, we'll run into that in this class, what like an amino R's? acid. What are the R's? The R's are some type of organic molecule. So the R, the R is a variable. Uh, it could be any organic molecule with that sticking off the end. It could be octane, it could be heptane, it could be cyclohexane, and then that sticking off of it. A sulfhydryl group is an SH sticking off an organic molecule. We call that a thiol. Ethane thiol, ethane thiol, ethane thiol. It's different ways to pronounce it. A phosphate group. We'll run into those a lot in this class. In actuality, if you look at the DNA molecule, someone was asking about this earlier. See the yellow things? Those are all phosphate groups. P is connected to four O's. We call that a phosphate group. That's what these yellow things are. They help make up DNA. Isn't that interesting? These are two things that have the same formula, but different, uh, different co uh, configurations, different structures. Where's my pen? I lost my pen. I have one freaking marker. Oh, there it is. If you look at this, this is how many carbons here? One, two, three, 
three carbons, one, two, three oxygens, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So these molecules are C3H6O3. Both of them are. Only the C double bond O is at the end over here, and it's in the middle here. So we call, we call things that have the same formula but different structures, we call them isomers. Isomers have the same formula. They're both C3H6O3, but different structures, and thus different names. This one's called glyceraldehyde. This one's called dihydroxyacetone. And if you take an organic chemistry class in college, they'll teach you how to name these things. They won't give you the name. They'll show you the molecule, and you'll have to come up with that name. Wow. Not easy, huh? This is a picture of what I ate this morning for breakfast. A <laughs> steak? I actually had three pieces of cake. I just wanted to take a picture of one. This shows all the different organic molecules. Um, there's actually four types that you have to know. Four types of organic molecules. And this is the essay. If you get chapter 3, the essay says, describe the four types of organic molecules in detail. And they are, you may have heard of some of these before, carbohydrates. You ever heard of carbohydrate before? Yeah. They're often called sugars or starches. Carbs. Carbs. Lipids. Let's say, let me put in parentheses, sugars, starches, are carbohydrates. Lipids are fats. Lipids are fats. Very nice. Nice job, Jeff. Jeff, you would know fats. The third type are called proteins. <laughs> proteins are proteins. <laughs> Other common name. And the fourth type are called nucleic acids. The best. Can you see that through the, through the monitor? You can see these words? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not light enough. You can see them. The whiteboard's usually pretty clear. I want to see a picture of your food in this book. <laughs> oh, it's there. It is there. You passed it. Really? Hey, oh, top oh, of 38. I got you. Wait, so, um... How I did uh, that is Sylvia a story in itself. Sy What's that? Sylvia S. Matter had the same breakfast? Mater, yes, but it's Mater. Uh -huh. No. Y'all enjoyed the same breakfast? I, I ate the breakfast, went back in time, had her put it in the book. Now I'm teaching about it. It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, uh, nucleic acids are like DNA and RNA. They're information carriers. Information molecules. So is it, is, is it like a little tiny computer or something like molecule? Yeah, or? yeah, oh. it is. Very, oh, very okay. similar. You know how computers work with zeros and ones? Yeah. These work with four different units. A's, T's, C's, and G's. And we're going to talk about how that works. Instead of zeros and ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. It's cool. It's very oh. similar to computer language, yeah. But it's food language. Food, it's, uh, yeah, it's an organic molecule language. So they have they have companies that can take any information you want, and the first guy that ever did it took his his name, and stored it as DNA code, and inserted it into a living bacteria, and let the bacteria multiply, and then he released it into nature, and so now there are bacteria running around with, with his <laughs> name in their DNA really? code. Whoa! How do you like? How do you go about like? How you do don't you have much else to do. <laughs> I just don't understand how you I'll show you. put DNA. I'll show you. Like, we'll we'll do it in this class in lab. We will put DNA into an organism. Put our We won't make the DNA like that guy did from scratch. He made it first, then he put it in. We'll buy it from somebody and then put it in. But still, it's fun. It's fun to do. It's fun to change organisms. In a way, we'll be playing God. <laughs> <laughs> Changing organisms. It's fun. Gives you a sense of power. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Um, so let's talk about all these uh, organic molecules. Now, the way you form organic molecules is you, you take small units and you put them together. A small unit is called a monomer. And when we put monomers together, we make large units called polymers. A monomer is a small unit. A polymer is a large unit. Let me give you an example. You see these little circles I have on the board? Magnetic circles. I love to play with my magnets, by the way. It's one of my favorite things. Y'all are out on Friday nights. Y'all are at the party or whatever. <laughs> I'm playing with my magnets. That's awesome. And yeah, it is. I enjoy it very much. And if a single, a single unit is called a monomer. Each of these things is a monomer, but if we put them together, click, click, <laughs> click, 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 there we have a polymer. Uh, like church, um, Isn't that fun? Like mon monotheistic and polytheistic? Mono meaning one, poly, poly meaning many. Pretty, pretty mm -hmm. nice. So monopoly. That's Latin, that's Latin, a monopoly. If you own a monopoly, you're the you, one, the, the one. Yeah. I'm, and by the way, you're looking at the 1987 national monopoly champion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to brag, but yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, monopoly is, is one. <laughs> See, true. back before computer games were big, people would play games on, on like boards what? with dice <laughs> and things. And, now you can do it on computer. Now if you want to play Monopoly, you load it into your PlayStation and it's there on the screen. We used to actually have the game itself. Well, what's your strategy? Coach, um, Coach, in, any Monopoly. day I'll take you on. My but, strategy... Were you an aggressive or defensive Monopoly? My strategy was when somebody was about to go bankrupt, I would buy all their property for very cheap. Oh, you would buy it from them? Buy it from them for, for very cheap, cheaper than anyone else was willing to to buy it from them. Mortgage <laughs> the things. Why would anyone else? Mortgage, mortgage the things. Um, go to jail. Stay in jail. <laughs> as long as possible. So I wasn't landing on anyone else's properties having to pay. And, and pretty soon after doing that, I owned all the property on the board. <laughs> and, um, so so, yeah. so you, you, you were a defensive one. You let them fight yeah, it out. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, no one caught on to and, it and, until and the final game when it was all and over. And then Tom would get out of jail and, like, yeah. just destroy everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it worked. And, the, I mean, I was, here's, you know, here's an 18-year-old kid coming in there, and, and I'm, I'm beating guys who've been playing Monopoly for 30 and 40 years. <laughs> And they're like, who is this guy? I, I mean, self-imprisonment. I've never really yeah. thought that. Well, you, you, can, you know, you can roll to get out of jail. Well, you, you don't have to do that. You, just you can say, I'm staying. So, <laughs> you have to get out of jail after three times. How would you... Enough about my Monopoly success. How, how, how would you we have to get on with it. How would you what imprison you? yourself? You, know, you can't imprison yourself. You have to land on jail. But, right. but so that's just, part of the philosophy just, is to try not to land on other people's property. Where did you... Where, where was this championship? It's in Wisconsin. You really, so you're not you, kidding. You drove no, up I'm serious. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're being serious? Yes, I'm serious. <laughs> you're being serious. That's awesome. I'm not going to make that stuff up. Uh, I, I, so I, they, I used to, I was kind of a nerd in high school and I went to gaming conventions. There were gaming conventions and I would go to these gaming conventions. Sweet. So anyway. I, I, I didn't know how to do your It's impressive, bro. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also came in second in the uh, in the competition of uh, um, what was the name Scrabble. Of it? Uh, no, it wasn't something you've ever heard. Dungeons of. It was, it, no, it was a space. It was where you fight uh, fight spaceships. Like it's like Star Trek, but it space wasn't called Star Trek. Trek. No, 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 no. It was called uh, Starship Starfleet Battles. They still have Starfleet Battles. How did that work? Second in Starfleet Battles. The guy that beat oh. me. He didn't want a piece of him. He, he destroyed me. I was like helpless. But I did come in second in that, which was a big... And at, at that time, the Starfleet Battles tournament was a lot bigger than the Monopoly tournament. So Whoa. that was kind of a, more of a success. Anyway, let's get back to, uh, to these. So let's say, if we, want to, if we want to put together these monomers, if we stick them together to one another, 
Um, we do what, what's called a dehydration reaction. The monomers will have OHs and Hs. That's supposed to be an H. That's a typo. Um, if you look in your book, that's not correct. It's supposed to be an H. But an OH will be removed from a monomer, and an H will be removed from a monomer, and so you'll get water from this reaction. That's why they call it a dehydration reaction, is because water is given off. What if they're um, just two OHs? Um, then an OH will be taken from one, and an, an H will be taken from the other, and the O will be left. And, and, and this bond right here will have an oxygen in the middle of it. What if they're just two hydrogens? Then you, then you won't be able to do the bond. Oh. It won't be, you won't make it. It can't happen. And so that's called a dehydration reaction. Now, you can, go, you can do that backwards. You can take a polymer and break it apart by adding water to the reaction. And the water comes apart. And an OH goes on one monomer, and an H goes on another, and it breaks them apart. And we call that hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is breaking apart using water. Hydro meaning water. Lysis meaning to kill. It's one of my favorite words, lysis. To destroy by using water. <laughs> so you can do that too. Um, I thought I had video footage. Videos. Do I not have video footage? Yeah. I had it. You two of them. Okay, I'll come back. I'll come back to that. So let's look at let's look at the first type of organic molecule. It's called the carbohydrate. These are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are basically made of these rings. A ring of, of carbon atoms and hydrogens and oxygens. And one of the most popular kind has this formula, C6H12O6. Go ahead and memorize that because that's the formula for glucose, which you're going to have to know later, and you can wait till later if you want to memorize it later. That's fine. But basically, we're talking about this molecule. And it, what it's showing here is four different representations of the same thing. You can draw it like this. You can draw it like that and leave out the carbons at each apex. And you're just assuming that the carbons are there. Or you can draw it like this, or you can draw it like that. And it all means the same thing. C6H12O6 is what they're referring to. I represent it like this. Can y'all handle that? That this actually means this? This would take too long to draw, and it's very confusing. This is easier. You see? There you go. What are the blue numbers? The blue numbers? Let's see blue numbers. What you, oh, those, the, uh, those are the carbons. If you count the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's proving that there's six carbons. <laughs> Just in case you can't count. Yeah, and they also, in some molecules, you'll see when we do DNA, they number the carbon molecules. You have to know which carbon molecule they're talking about. And it's usually numbered that way, counterclockwise. More organic chemistry rules that you'll learn later. Sucrose is sugar, correct? Yeah. Now let's, because... let's talk about a single unit, a single ring. We call that a monosaccharide. Of course. A monosaccharide. Mono meaning one, a single unit. And some examples of that are glucose and fructose. Glucose is blood sugar, sugar that floats around in your blood. It's also made in photosynthesis by all the plants out there and stored in their leaves and eventually stored in their roots. And fructose is fruit sugar. It's uh, what makes a lot of fruits sweet to taste. Single units. Now if we take two monosaccharides and we show them together by what kind of reaction? Chemical. 
You remember what it's called when we put two of these together and water comes out? Dehydration. Very good. We call this now a disaccharide. And some examples are sucrose, lactose, and maltose. Have you ever heard of sucrose before? Sucrose is table sugar. It's sugar that you put on your Rice Krispies. The way I do it is, I take the Rice Krispies and I spoon about eight teaspoons full of sugar onto the top. And then I take the milk and I pour it in the side, trying not to upset the delicate balance. But usually, some of the sugar falls to the bottom. And when I'm done eating the Rice Krispies, though, I got big scoops Ooh. of sugar on the bottom. Do you like those? <laughs> you just eat those, and you're like, yes. I've never had Rice Krispies with sugar. Yeah, you need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I thought like, Rice Krispies were really bad, Super and then you put sugar on them. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yes. Put sugar on they're your Rice Krispies. They're kind of plain by themselves. Yeah, yeah, they're very plain. But a little snapping and popping is fun. <laughs> Um, so that's what sucrose looks like. It's actually a glucose and a fructose, that's the fruit sugar one, and then you hook them together and now you got sucrose. Two of them together. Here we, if you hook a glucose to another glucose, you have another sugar called maltose. You've maybe heard of a malt, like malted milk balls, or they used to call old milkshakes malts. Are we going to watch the video? Yeah, let's hook some things together. These aren't that exciting. I'm fine. Jumping up and down after this. Somewhat cool, I guess. A molecule of glucose may covalently bond to a molecule of fructose to form sucrose, a disaccharide. Water is also a product of condensation reaction. That was extreme. Wasn't that great? Wow. Oh, wow. Wait, there's another one. I was a little disappointed with that. There's another one. Small molecules may be linked together to form larger molecules by condensation reactions. For example, a molecule of glucose may covalently bond to a molecule of fructose to form sucrose, a disaccharide. Water is also a product of condensation reaction. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Larger molecules may be broken down into smaller molecules by hydrolysis reactions. Water must be added for each hydrolysis reaction. For example, sucrose, with the addition of water, is broken down into glucose and fructose. into your blood and then it'll be blood sugar. It's that simple. Have you ever heard of lactose? Intolerant. Lactose is milk sugar and some people are lactose intolerant. It's the sugar that's in milk. And what you could do is uh, if you drink milk, um, your body, there's a lot of sugar in there and that can be used for energy by your body. Some people are lactose intolerant, which means they don't have the enzymes to break that lactose down. And so they drink the milk, the lactose goes right past their stomach and is not digested, goes through their large intestine, and it ends up in their... Wow. <laughs> I've never even heard that ringtone before. Unbelievable. That, oh, that is wow. kind of half -life. I'm trying to tell you about lactose and... That's not even my ringtone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Coach, that is not even my ringtone. I'm very <laughs> So anyway, back to lactose intolerance. If you uh, if you eat the lactose and you're lactose intolerant, the the sugar goes all the way to your large intestine, and bacteria that live in your large intestine will eat it and break it down and produce a lot of gas waste product, carbon dioxide gas, which then has no other way out than through your butthole. And so you have really bad gas if you're lactose intolerant, if you drink milk or eat ice cream or that kind of thing. 
So you got to be you got to be careful. Now y'all are laughing. About half of people become lactose intolerant later in life. So probably the ones who are laughing will become lactose intolerant because that is the little uh, plan that whoever has for us all. Is it a myth that most black people are lactose intolerant? I don't know. I think it does vary by race. I think it does. I didn't know if it would, that black people... Um, I, I think there is something about that I read about that, though. I heard it's golfers who are usually lactose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they are. <laughs> so you, you can everybody can drink it as a kid, but some people lose that ability as an adult. So that's something some of us have to look forward to. But nowadays you can just go buy lactate, which is milk that doesn't have any lactose sugar. Yeah, that's. Right. Does it even taste like milk? Yeah, it tastes it tastes just the same. Just really? Yeah. Have you ever had it? I've had it. My dad buys it. Is that lactose dog? Yeah. Is, is, it, is it genetic? Uh, huh? Is lactose genetic? This probably has an aspect of genetics. Uh -oh. I'll probably give it to him. It's okay. I like the lactate. <laughs> it's a little bit more expensive. All they do is they take lactase enzyme and stick it in the milk and it breaks up all the sugar. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Pretty, pretty simple. Boom. Now, there's another thing. If you take a bunch of these and hook them together, watch this. Click, 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 click. Oh, we can make a huge molecule here. And it's not called a monosaccharide. It's not called a disaccharide. It's a polysaccharide. A polysaccharide has up to many thousands of individual units. Here we have a potato, and if you looked at a potato under a microscope, you would see it has many of these starch granules. And each starch granule is made up of trillions of these little curly cube molecules that are just one monosaccharide after another hooked together. Now when you put this on your tongue, it doesn't taste sweet like these sugars that we studied before. It tastes like potatoes. But it's still sugars, isn't it? When this gets down into your intestines, these things are broken down into sugars. So it's just like eating sugar, but the sugar is all bashed together in the potato. And what was happening was the potato, the potato plant was growing, sitting there in the sun growing, and storing sugar into its, its root, into that potato, and was going to use that sugar the next year after the winter to grow new leaves. Stole. But what happened was a farmer came out with a machete, <laughs> cut off the leaves and stomped them down and, and pulled the potatoes out and, and ran off with them. And sold them and ate them. And, see, people don't understand. Vegetarians, you know, they, they brag the people who eat meat. They're like, oh, you're killing that animal. Well, what about the vegetarians killing the plant? Nobody cares about the plant. You know, they're plant killers, and they think that's better, just because the plants don't talk and smile and run around. Coach, coach, coach. Yes. Do you want to sign them? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think Whereas, I've seen every episode. This, this, seems, this seems like it could have easily been a sign Really? Flip right I, don't, I, I don't think I've seen it on sign that, 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 now, that's a big compliment there. For I appreciate that. I like that show. I wish I had some of his money. Um... This is the liver. If you've ever seen the liver, it's a big organ inside your body. It's just right about here. And one of the hundreds of jobs it does is it stores sugar. After I eat my Rice Krispies with sugar all over it, these things are broken down and then transported to my liver. And my liver will store that sugar as a big, weird-looking molecule like this. And then later in the day, when my body needs sugars, one by one, these things will come off and be released into the bloodstream. What happens if you run out of those sugars? Um, then you start breaking down fat. And fat is another way of storing sugars. I'll show you tomorrow. And when you run out of fat, you When you run out of fat, you start breaking down protein. Like muscle? Breaking down your own muscle. Uh -oh. And then, uh, and then eventually like you'll break your heart fats. muscle down so much it won't be able to pump blood, and then you'll die. That's how starvation works. It takes about... <laughs> Um, two weeks in a real skinny person and three months in a real fat person. 
Nope. To think you can go three months without eating. Some people can't. There have been people stuck on desert islands and out floating around the Pacific in a raft who have lived for over three months without eating. What about like those like wow. half ton people you see on TV? That'd be so weird. They could they go a long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would you say, they would, would, would you feel safe saying a year? Probably not a year. It well, it, it depends I, I, on the vitamins too. I mean, you have to have vitamins, and even the people floating out on the rafts were able to get enough, you know, whatever seaweed or whatever floating by. You know, little maybe catch a bird that lands on them. Um, <laughs> serious people that still a bird lands on them and they grab them. So they have been able to get some. Eat it. Working. You feel alive. Um, okay, the last thing. This type of carbohydrate, and, and so polysaccharides, we're talking about starch, we're talking about glycogen, that's the liver sugar, and, but most, mostly it's cellulose. Cellulose is a carbohydrate that's found in wood, in plants, in leaves, in paper. This paper is actually sugars. Put together one at a time in a configuration that, eat, that we can't digest. I mean, if you could digest it, you could just eat this right here. <laughs> mm, oh, I love this book. But we can't digest it. If you were to eat paper or leaves, try it for lunch today, go out and pick grass and leaves and put them on a big plate and eat them, you'll have really bad diarrhea because it just goes right through your system and out your butt and you don't get any... any nutrition from it. Right. But cows can do it. Cows have bacteria living in their guts. They can break this stuff down. And so all they have to do is eat a bunch of leaves. Um, there are other organisms like termites that can break down the cellulose and wood. And that's all they eat all day. And, uh, and they can get the sugar out of it. But for our digestive systems can't do it. So, you want to see a stupid video? Do we have time? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have time. Where should we go? The now latest comment from the only voice in the world. I'm going to take an email on Sunday. Just me. Just me. Oh, man. Miss Lorelei. Miss Lorelei. That is one stunning. We'll have to do it next time. Remind me of the stupid video next time.